is kind of exciting. We have changed the patio around a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, what patio we have? You know, the little apartments have little patios, and my wife likes to come out and sit in the morning and spend some time with God. And so I always felt bad because I never quite had some place for her to sit and relax and take it easy. And it was always not quite her size or didn't look that nice. And even though I tried to disguise it with plants, it just wasn't quite right. So we got a little table and two little chairs and wow, voila. Looks awesome now. So I'm kind of excited because we get to use that for videotaping and doing devotional. You could say we killed two birds with one stone, <laughs> so to speak. While I've been doing this, I've been learning a lot about how if you get set in your ways, and you make yourself stuck into a certain pattern only, then God, when he does change and rearrange your life, you wind up being in turmoil and sometimes lost, not knowing what to do or how to react. Sometimes there's anger. Sometimes there's hostility towards others. I know I've seen a lot of Christians who fall away from the Lord just because it didn't go their way, the way they thought they would, the way things they had planned. And you know, Jesus never said that our lives would be ordered or structured in such a way that we would always know what was going to happen. If anything, he said, the wind bloweth, whither it will, you neither know where it's coming from, nor where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. And the one thing that you should count on in your life, and count on in your life, is you'll never know where it is that God wants you to go, or what he wants you to do until he tells you. Devotionals take you there. Getting there. Come unto me, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Where the sin and the sorrow cease and the song and the saints commence. Do I want to get there? I can, I can now. The questions that matter in life are remarkably few and they are all answered by the words, come unto me. Not do this or do that, but come unto me. If I will come to Jesus, my actual life will be brought into accordance with my real desires. I will actually cease from sin and find the song of the Lord begin, the song that he alone can sing. You are the words of that song. You are its melody. He is singing you. Have you ever come to Jesus? Watch the stubbornness of your heart you will do anything rather than the one simple childlike thing that God requires. Come unto me. If you want the actual experience of ceasing from sin, you must come to Jesus. You can't do it yourself. Jesus Christ makes himself the touchstone. Watch how he used the word come. At the worst, at the most unexpected moments, there is the whisper of the Lord, come, come unto me and you are drawn immediately. Personal contact with Jesus alerts, or personal contact with Jesus alters everything. Be stupid enough to come and commit yourself to what he says. Be dumb enough to believe he says what he means and means what he says. The attitude of coming is that the will resolutely lets go of everything and deliberately commits all to him. That means you don't think about it, you don't worry about it, you don't conceive of it, you don't plan it, you just do it. Come unto me. And I will give you rest. That means I will stay you, I will keep you, I will preserve you. Not, I will put you to bed and hold your hand and sing you to sleep. But, I will get you out of bed, out of the languor and laziness and exhaustion, out of the state of being half dead while you're alive, and I will imbue you with the spirit of life and you will be stayed by the perfection of vital activity. We get pathetic and talk about suffering the will of the Lord. Where is the majestic vitality and might of the Son of God in that? 
too often I see people tell me what the Bible says, tell me what the scriptures say, tell me all about God, but don't tell me what God said. They don't tell me that, you know, I was talking to the Lord today and I just don't get it. I don't see your point. I personally, the Lord was telling me that, you know, this is the way I should go. And I can't agree with you, so I'm going the other way. And you know, that's what your God is all about. He's not about coming up with a cookie cutter or a religious program that's going to design you in such a way that you're going to appear, smear, and be like all those other people that you see around you. God designs you uniquely different and distinctive, and he wants you to find and be fulfilled in one thing, and it's the same thing that he did with his father. Jesus did nothing except that every day he sought his father before the crowds to sunrise and spent long hours and as he described it later, he said, I only do those things I see my Father in heaven do. Jesus wants you to do the same with him. He wants you, if you really want to accomplish your utmost for his highest, he wants you to come to him today. If you come unto Jesus, you will blow people's minds. And if you say you've been with the Lord, you will contradict everything that they feel, think, and believe in. Because believe me, one thing a person cannot stand is when someone has been with the Lord and they are in rebellion. It drives them nuts. So whenever you have any situation or circumstance that comes up in your life, every minute of the day, do like Chambers said. Come unto me. And that's what Jesus is telling you today. Come. Under me.